Mm, what is up, you guys? And welcome to the first week of PBAL versus this Sama gives Japan Val Plumes, which I really, really, really think I'm butchering. Um, Australian player, uh, which is always great to face another Aussie, though I myself, of course, live in Sweden, but you know, my family live in Australia, so I'll, I'll say it's fine in some aspect, though I don't have the Aussie accent. Because I necessarily don't believe it's very great, I'm just saying that out there. But quite frankly, what I'm trying to get at is that it's always great to face another Aussie player, but it also comes with some complication, which is timing. And we did our very best, I think he battled really early, and I was battling really late. So I think we got the best out of it, I should say. Uh, when it comes to Troy's team, um, I really can't go over the team matchup too much. All I think I can say is that we are facing what I was thinking I was going to be forced to be facing, which was... Uh, Victini, John Fan, Cortana, Mega Pinsir, Hydreigon, and Substrike. Yeah, Substrike makes sense for the team because it does deal quite well actually with both Superior and my Thunderous. And consider the things, um, I'm d thinking his Substrike is going to be a Sap Zipper to not be swept actually by uh, the Superior, which wasn't my team. Um, besides that, I have Mega Absol, Thunderous, a lowly Nine Tails, and Nido King. Grandpa with Sap Sipper and Shuffleberry to be able to deal with Cortana, which set it really is, or depending on whatever it is, and a special defensive uh, right on to be able to take on Glaciate from potentially Victini, but that's about it. Like, I can't take an energy ball, but it does shake the physical scarf set, which is something I'm um, absolutely thinking common because Absol is such a pain for my opponent here to deal with, and my Absol overall could very well be my win condition versus everything. Uh, my set here with my um, Absol is uh, Sucker Punch and Pursuit to get a little likes off of Fire Blast and uh, Ice Beam. So, quite a um, standard set here. Um, Ponderous is a sub nasty plant set with Hidden Power Fire and, or Hidden Power Ice and Thunderbolt. Um, yeah, besides that, the rest is quite standard. I do believe my uh, Nidoking King here was an Assault Fest variant. Uh, we actually had it battle for two weeks ago and unfortunately I've forgotten a few things. Um, due to a current raise in my house, it just, I've just been very, very, very busy and I haven't really been able to record anything. So with that said, I really want to say I'm sorry guys, um, a lot more uploads will come in the future weeks here, or future days. So with that said, let's of course go into the match. So from the get-go here, I actually decided to lead off with Absol because Victini seems to be his best lead. It was either that or uh, Dolphin. If Dolphin comes in, I'm gonna go basically, but he starts off with Victini. Uh, my best play is actually here to go for a Sucker Punch, because if it's a Scarf set, I'll get a massive ship on it. While I will lose my Absol, it's still gonna be overall the better play here. But he switches out, you don't wanna risk it, and it goes to Hydreigon. So I get my Mega Evolution off, which means Stealth Frogs isn't necessarily his play on Dolphin ever. And, uh, well, that's basically all I needed, as, uh, of course, Sucker Punch is gonna fail. Now, I'll actually force the switch out, I'm gonna go into my Alola Nine Tails. No win, he could have Flash Cannon. But either way, um, it still shouldn't do too much to me. I should be able to have speed depending on his set. And, uh, well, he goes for a U-turn. So that means, uh, well, it made sense considering that, of course, uh, versus Absol, Absol, he could have definitely given some good damage on it. So Victini comes in, I can't do anything versus Victini. And while I do have Dark Pulse on my wall, Night Hills, which actually doesn't make sense, I don't want to stay in. So I'm going to go with for it, my right on, and I'm uh, going to take that V-Crate. Um, so it's not a bad set, that's for sure, but besides that, I really have nothing for it. Um, I could have gone for the easy rocks here if I wanted to, but then again, I have to risk the potential of uh, energy ball, and that's not always a great thing, as he's going to switch in the fan and um, like I said, I don't want to risk any things, I'm going to bring in a little Nine Tails again, knowing that if he has energy ball, <laughs> he can switch moves, and I can have speed and go for an Aurora Veil, so I wasn't too scared. Um, now he switches out Dolphin and goes back to Victini. It really does punish me that I don't get my rocks up, but I do get my Veil up. So this means that Victini, in theory, is not a threatening force anymore. And if he goes for V-Create, I can go to Absolute Pursuit Trap this, but it has Brick Break. And uh, that's always a scary thing, as he does have speed. Of course he does. And uh, Hail stops, I can't reset my Aurora Veil either, so it's not ideal. As he switches into his dragon, I'm gonna switch out myself, try to reset the hail, and I go to foreign. And this is not good. Like, I was not considering, I would say, directly earth power or anything like that. I didn't think it made sense for the team. 
I think I'm going to my Salt Vest <laughs> Nero King and they get a crit on me and of course he has Earth Power that's really really unfortunate luckily I do believe he's locked into that so I'm not going to take any risks here and as I actually switch out of course and going back to Fenrir and we get a pretty interesting situation here because I can absolutely destroy the staff and if I want to I'll also break the study uh, so I was thinking my opponent here was not going to stay in because it would make no sense as I said on my Aurora Veil but not only does he stay in, he actually goes for rocks and uh, yeah he's just doing a really really risky play here so I'm thinking right I could potentially follow this up and I think it makes sense here so I went for Dark Pulse, he keeps staying in, he's sacking the Dark Fan and for me it made it totally no sense because that made right on that much more of a force towards him uh, but for what is worth he does stay in to sack the Dark Fan so we get that out of the way and um, at this point I was feeling really good um, because Dawn it was an issue for me to deal with definitely more so towards Absol as um, I gotta decide here to of course sack play my Nido King which got definitely wasted due to that crit got pretty much unusable from well, the future of this game so with that said yeah if we're gonna do something here it's absolutely get rid of the Victini as losing speed means we have speed anyway and a pursuit will KO him no matter what is the last defenses so we're, we're good here it doesn't matter if he's scoffed but he does decide to switch out which is fine it absolutely just makes sure that Victini is not a threat we knock that out and uh, at this point I'm, I'll, I'll be honest I thought I was gonna win <laughs> I really 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 thought that this was nothing here that could potentially deal with me as he, his spinster comes in the only thing I potentially could fear is if he had something like Stone Edge uh, but besides that Pinsir can't do anything because it's thunderous and um, depending on his remaining mod, we know how Dragon is scoffed, so I can't outspeed the team anyway. Um, but he goes directly for a close combat, which was kind of kind of up there, absolutely. And uh, I probably should have found a few steps ahead here, but all I was thinking was he's probably going to switch into Sim Striker. So I'm going to go for a substitute, but goes directly to High Dragon. So that was that was surprising, but at the same time, I think it made sense. I most likely was thinking I was going to go for Nasty Plot or potentially Substitute, but he locks himself to Fire Blast and I'm going to go for the Hidden Power of Fire. Unfortunately for me, I really thought and, um, behind the Veil that he was not going to be able to break my sub, but he is. And the risk with that is that since he brought my, um, my Substitute, his next Fire Blast could very well KO me. So since I am just around half HP, so I need to force myself out. And I'm going back to foreign. He is locked in Fire Blast, like I said, and uh, well, that did nothing. Shouldn't do nothing. I'm not scared. Uh, issue here is I should probably have followed this up with a switch out, uh, but at this point, I wasn't thinking that well since I go for Stealth Rocks, which in hindsight only matter versus the Pinsir, which I could deal with anyway. And he goes directly for a Sword Stance here. Uh, I actually sack my Ride on and go for an Earthquake. And um, I do a fair chunk here because I'm not invested, so I'm happy with that damage. But since I have Saps here for my grandpa, I really, really, really should have switched that in. Uh, because this is not your average Cortana. This is the timid, not that offensive Cortana. Which I should have kind of flagged on. Because it meant in theory that I couldn't do anything versus my grandpa. And uh, I I kind of choke here. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest. You guys see here. You know, we, we get in a situation that we should have gotten into. And uh, I get myself in a situation that is unwittable for me. And the reason I say that is because Grandpa, which I'm sending in now, was designed for this very situation with the Shuffleberry and with having Sap Zipper. There is no way a plus two Cortana could actually defeat us. And me failing to react on that in, in a proper way really, really ruined us for this matchup completely. Because it means that my opponent now, in theory, has nothing to fear as um, I'm standing here with Grandpa actually going for a roost hoping that he was not able to KO me but that's just wishful thinking this thing is here I can't outspeed um, the sim strike at this point and Bow since rocks on the field I really really just can't sting this Pokemon at all and it's really unfortunate because I thought I really 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 thought I was playing the game I was I was gonna say well enough I absolutely don't say I was gonna play that re really good but I played it well enough to keep um, uh, keep up tabs with my opponent. Unfortunately, I failed to kind of react on the Cortana, and that really, really, really is what's damaging me here. I was 
I'll, I'll be honest, I should have directly forced a switch in Grandpa, consider that it it walled any set he would count for, uh, and it was really good for baiting, but since I'm actually not doing that, I lose this game because, well, I mispredicted and my opponent got a massive momentum that I at that. Now, of course, we lose this game 3-0, and I think we lose very fairly here. Our opponent did get that massive momentum that I just couldn't do anything about, or I had the means to, I just failed to respond to them. Um, the thing is here, I'll, I'll be honest, I've just put it in, not to really uh, be offensive to my opponent, but rather, the way he was playing, I thought I had won very early. Um, the way he sacked his Dauphin, sacked his Victini, uh, it mean, meant that my team was in theory in a spot where I could say play safe rather well and still win quite easily. But that's the thing, like the second you start playing like that, you will lose and I should be one that absolutely talk about something like that. I've done this so many times. Cortana was never a threat towards my team, and I'm not saying that to be disrespectful, but rather I had the means to deal with it, and I failed to respond to it, and I still, looking back at this game, can't believe myself when I had a fully healthy grandpa designed to piss on a Cortana, and it just didn't, because I, ah, oh, I didn't think that one through. Uh, the second I saw Sword Stance, I should have just, well, sack something, or at least get something out that shouldn't shouldn't get this Cortana boosted, because if it gets boosted to speed, well, then Thunders can't do anything about it. It's Thunders could have easily won a KO with, <laughs> if it wasn't, of course, speed boosted. Hell, I could have even force switched Thunders in and forced out Cortana, forced my opponent here to play the Substriker card, and keeping that Pokemon at bay. Um, the reason I say all this is because I really, 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 really had the means to, at that point, while maybe not win the game, Depending on the situation, I still has to reconsider all the plays my opponent had left. But that play and standing in with Rhydon meant that I lost the game. It just is that. And losing Absol meant the same thing. I just I lost the game for the very wrong reasons. And that was because I made a really, really bad call. And that's why Troy, my opponent here, deserves to win. Because even though he was playing it rather shaky in the beginning, he wrapped the end game just right. And that's the thing, like... It is all the turns that matters, it's the last turns that makes the decisive points. And here's where Troy were better than me, for sure, and deserved this win for Trio. So, with that said guys, I really hope you enjoyed this game. And like I said before, there are going to be more uploads now in the future, because I'm actually having time to record, <laughs> which is great. I've been waiting quite some time now, I want to be honest to say that. But yeah, thank you for all for watching, and stay tuned, because the week 2 battle, which I will replay, which is maybe uploaded today too versus the blazing squid so we'll see if i figure out one out two uploads in a day that's quite cool isn't it anyway thank you for watching and take care of course bye